The cryosphere refers to the frozen parts of the Earth. Where do you find ice? The North Pole and the South Pole are both frozen all year long. You can also find ice all year long on the top of very high mountains where the air is thin and cold. There are some mountains, like Chimborazo in Ecuador or Kilimanjaro in Africa, where there is snow and ice very close to the equator, which is the yellow line on this map. So the cryosphere really can be found all over the world. Let's take a detailed look at ice and why it is important. We can divide ice into three basic categories. Sea ice, ice sheets, and glaciers. Sea ice occurs where the ocean is cold enough to freeze. That's 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Near the poles, the ocean remains frozen even during the summer. In fact, there is ocean at the North Pole that does not melt at all. Glaciers and ice sheets are different. When snow falls, it covers the ground, and the next snow falls on top of that, and so on and so forth. As the snows get thicker, it weighs down on the snow below and packs it tighter and tighter. Eventually, you end up with a thick, strong matrix of ice that we either call a glacier or an ice sheet. What's the difference? Mainly size. The massive ice sheet that covers Antarctica, or the one that covers Greenland, can be two miles thick in some places, and they each cover thousands of square miles. That's an ice sheet. Glaciers are much smaller, like these alpine glaciers in the Canadian Rockies. Glaciers and ice sheets are complicated structures. As snow continues to fall on ice sheets and glaciers, the glacier is squeezed out on the sides and pushed along the continent or mountain where it forms. Eventually, the end of the glacier travels along until it reaches a point where it finds warmer areas and melts too quickly to continue building up. And that's the edge of the glacier or ice sheet. The edge of the glacier will melt while snow and ice continue to build at the center. Glaciers, ice sheets, and even sea ice all actually move just very slowly as the ice makes its way around from the top to the bottom or the center to the edge. Have you ever heard the expression at a glacial pace? It means really, really slowly, and now you know why. Are glaciers important? Climatologists call them the air conditioners of the planet. Air that travels over ice in the far north, or even in the mountains, gets cool very quickly, and when it collides with warmer air from the tropics, that temperature difference helps create the weather and climate our bodies are adapted to survive in. What happens as our climate warms? Well, as you might imagine, snow and ice melt. All over the world, the cryosphere is getting smaller. Alpine glaciers like this one are quickly losing mass. This one in Canada is 60% smaller than it was in 1935. Sea ice in the Arctic is also much smaller today than even a few years ago. In 1979, this is what the ice in the Arctic looked like in September. That's the month when the ice cover is the smallest. Now here it is in 1980. Here it is in 1981. Got the idea? Now look at the same ice in September of 2016. Now here's 2015. Here's 2014. September of 2012 was the smallest ice extent ever recorded in the Arctic. Here that is. It's quite a difference, right? That's what has scientists concerned. Ice sheets in Greenland and in Antarctica are also melting quickly. Does that worry scientists? Well, most of those ice sheets are on land. And when ice that's on land melts, that water flows into the ocean, causing the sea level to rise all over the world. If enough ice melts in Greenland and Antarctica, 
the seas could get much higher than they are today. As ice melts back, it also causes strong changes to weather and climate patterns all over the Earth. Biomes are strongly affected from the Arctic on down. Of course, not all ice follows the pattern. The world is a big and complicated place, but by and large, the cryosphere is doing what ice always does when it starts getting warmer out. It melts.